Hell yeah, dude. Welcome, welcome back to the club. All right. So the the biggest thing about early laning phase and what you really need to understand is how you try to position yourself. He's going to be getting a couple minions so that he has some fury, so that as soon as Maokai comes into lane, there's already a kill threat. There's already the potential for him to go in whenever Maokai bears himself. So Maokai has to respect that and play back. I am not streaming, and I am a uh, Grandmaster's mid trainer player. So, he's going to be going on the Maokai, because there's just the opportunity to, but since he's not level 2 yet, doesn't need to take a full all-in trade. You don't... What, one thing that really does separate great Trinomir players from just good Trinomir players is not over-committing to trades. And also, one thing that I often see with lower-level Trinomir players is they just always hold Q, and uh, not just spamming Q, and then they're always low health, and then they wonder what sustain is. So, Fog just went for a ward in there, showed the enemy jungle path. Now Vi has a lot more information than she used to. And should help the team play around it. Bot can play a lot more aggressively now that he went for that ward, since they know that Graves is not top. Have I faced Nice lately? I played him in, I, I saw him in one champion select, but I haven't played against him. Uh, the wave is pushing into him, but he wouldn't... Uh, Trinomir wouldn't be able to punish it right now without Fury. So he's going to want to just CS a little bit, get some Fury. And then with the wave pushing in, there is the possibility of getting a play right now, especially since Vi is topside. There, there's no chance of a uh, getting 1v2 when the jungler is so close. And uh, burn the flash, and since the wave is still pushing, uh, Trinomir Fog pinged off of the wave, because it would have been very easy for Vi to just tax a little bit, push the wave, and ruin this great thing that we have here. This, this is beautiful. Uh, bouncing back the wave so that it comes to you, and now Maokai doesn't have an ability to do anything but soak up XP. And uh, the wave is big enough to where he can get a couple CS, but it won't matter much in the end. The cannon would be pretty easy to deny. And thinning out the wave a little bit, since he has the cannon difference, he doesn't need to hold the entire massive wave, because you only need more minions than the enemy to actually hold the freeze right now. And... Ideally, what Maokai would do is ask Graves to go top to try to break this freeze, because otherwise he's just not going to have uh, a good time. And he's just kind of chancing it and trying to take a trade. And we, we should be able to win this trade. And we do. Alright, and now, now is a time where you can push out the wave, since you're just looking for a back right now. Going to have about 1,700 or so golds. He will have TP, so the question is, is he going to TP back to the wave? Or is he going to TP to turret, or is he just going to walk to lane? If... Uh, I would probably, as Maokai, walk back to lane. But since Fog is 6 right now, there is the question of whether or not he is going to attempt the dive. Uh, especially with such a big wave building, if they can... If, if Fog can get the kill onto Maokai right now, Burn the Aftershock and then go in later. Especially since he does have the Flash still. He could potentially deny this huge wave and that would just be GG. So, he's just trying to deny as much as possible. And every CS that... Maokai goes for, would generally just be contested right now. Because one thing you can do as Trinomir is just auto attack and spin, and then you're good. Since there is a big amount of gold, you always want to 
have more stats than the enemy, so backing is super valuable whenever you can get it for free. Alright, so the, the Vamp Scepter is going to give a lot of extra sustain. How many melee casters does the full health cannon count on as lane pushing? I don't think that it's necessarily super useful to... Uh, looks like we're going to be building into Sanguine Blade. Going to be focusing on primarily splitting and abusing how weak Maokai is in the 1v1. Maokai is a champion who's generally going to be a lot stronger grouping up. And so if we can force him into the sideline and keep him there, then we're going to get a lot of value out of the uh, spear. Building Weenie Blade. All right. So I can just get the plate right here. Maokai is no threat to us at this point. I haven't seen Graves on the map, but going for this dive still shouldn't be an issue. It's just free. And then push the wave in, and then everything is free. And we'll be able to lifesteal up and up so that if Graves does come, we're, we're pretty safe right now. Graves is bought right now, so there's, there's no issues doing anything right now. Vi was going to go for the Ocean Dragon, but doesn't seem like it's who needed. Got the three plates. Maokai still can't kill because of all of that lifesteal. And if he is dragged away from the turret a little bit, and if Maokai does go for the chase right here, then you would lose minions in top lane. Since we're building Linguini Blade into tanks, do we build it into Mundo 2 or are we staying with the ER rush? Uh, I don't think that would actually be too bad of an idea. Usually rest Sanguine when it wants to farm the whole map. Yeah, if you're playing a lot, Linguini is for permafarm. Yeah, if you're not interacting with the enemy as much, you gain a lot of value out of um, Linguini Blade. Okay, climb up. Do I have pants on? Yes, I do have pants on. Who is Yasuke? Uh, mid Trindamir phase rush abuser. Uh, Grandmaster's Trindamir streamer and YouTuber. Good shit. Looks like the rest of the team has been able to make some good plays. They overcommitted on that dive. At this point, we can just. The topside jungle is ours. And if we know where Maokai is, then we can't abuse the Graves. But since Maokai was MIA, it's not worth taking the risk. Who's my worst matchup? Mid, it would be uh, Syndra, LeBlanc, Akali. Generally, just because those are the... Uh, no, sorry. Zoe, LeBlanc, Syndra. Akali is actually not too bad after the... Uh, 25 nerfs that she's had. If the rival doesn't want to leave his turret... Well, if it's Maokai, he doesn't... Maokai doesn't... Um, he doesn't threaten you, even if you're attacking the turret. At this point, there's no way that you can do enough damage to actually stop you. So we're going to just take the turret quickly. Um, trying to get this wave pushed into the tier 2. And then we're going to look for some jungle. Now another option of what you could do right there is keeping the first turret up for a little bit and let the turret deny some of the minions um, so that the gold just goes into the nether abyss and doesn't exist. It looks like bot lane is still fine, but Vayne Taric can get very scary if they do happen to snowball. Do I have YouTube? Yes, just search my name on YouTube and you'll find it. Siaska on YouTube. Vayne is getting kind of scary. And Vayne Taric is definitely a combo that can be a little bit more difficult to deal with. 
But if we just permafarm and stay the course, they shouldn't have an answer to it. Because Vayne Terek can only be in one spot at a time. Yeah, the biggest... Uh, I recently got a co got coaching by Max Waldo. Uh, he's affiliated with LS and is the only the only freelance coach for pro players right now. And the biggest takeaway that I had from the uh, from the coaching is that it's important to think about the game less so in terms of how do I as Trinomir get as much gold as possible, and more so about how do I have the biggest difference between me and the enemy? Because gold difference is the uh, is the important thing in the one v one. So get this wave. There's not much jungle to farm. There's not really too much of a reason to stay. If you can get a free back like this, there's no reason not to. Just using all of the gold that you have as much as you can is good. The back was stopped, so now it's not worth the recall because now we would lose DS. Why mid instead of top? Agency. And I believe that there's a lot that Trinomir can offer to the mid lane that other champions can't. So going for that wave, since there's no nothing else to go for on the top side and backing wouldn't have been worth it. Do you think that farm is the most important thing in the game? The most important thing in the game is killing the enemy Nexus. That That is true. Whatever gets you there, it gets you there. But in general, when you have more stats than the enemy because you're farming better, then it's just easier to play the game. You have more options and there's less room for mistakes. Now, at this point, it can get really hard to dive Maokai just because of the amount of armor that he has. What do you do typically to win a game in mid and late game? Uh, abuse splitting mechanics. So, what I do... Alright, wait, wait, hang on. We'll go for this dive. Honestly, I only felt like it went for that dive because I said Maokai would be hard to dive. So he's just... Show enough. <laughs> uh, what do you typically do to win a game in the mid and late game? Uh, since what I use is phase rush, which is much stronger in team fights relative to lethal tempo because you have much more target access on carries. <laughs> what what I do is I, I'll split a lane and then I'll be in fog. And uh, I can either go to a team fight or I can go to the split. And if I can just outmaneuver the enemy uh, split pusher, then I can either get a 4v, uh, 5v4 situation for my team, or I can get a free split with no consequences. Uh, I have to go to work soon, so I probably won't be able to stream until later tonight. Uh, enemy Nexus when I need the extra 50 gold, that's a good idea. What's my secondary role? Bot lane. I play mid and bot tournament. Yeah, looks like we're really, really close to getting a item, Essence Weaver, which is really good. And Vi is respecting that and just letting the primary win condition of his team carry, which is what we need to do. Uh, why not top? Because top suck. Into what has Fog done wrong because he's not 8-0? If anything, that, that's the right play. Because you don't want to have too big of a stomp, because that's just not entertaining to watch. If there's no pushback. So it's going easy to kind of... Let this game still be a game. Looks like Vi is going to play bot. Um, 
Caitlyn survived in the 2v2, so it looks like they're fine. Malakai is bot lane, so we have free reign over the top turret. If he, he is backing right away, so can probably get some damage. And they actually got the kill on Bane, so it looks like this game is pretty free. Probably, yeah, definitely just going to be able to get the turret right now. And since Graves is dead, Ari is mid, there's only Maokai to stop us. One split push and one help your team. You split push when split pushing is the good idea. Yeah, it's not worth it taking early inhibs because it gives the enemy team free gold. You're giving them a, an extra super minion every wave. And then also, um, you're denying the wave from yourself because the wave is going to be inside of their base. I've won games where I'm 0-5 against uh, LCS top jungle duos because I let them take the early end hit, and then I have free farm difference for 5 plus minutes. You want to kill the graves right now, that's the one thing you want to do. And since we're full enough health, we can go on to this. But Tarek is coming, so we have to be wary of that. Vayne is bot, and Vayne is their biggest threat right now. So we just want to push this wave in. Uh, Scuttle is up, that's always a possibility. Rift Herald is also there. We can use that to crack the other turrets that might be a little bit harder because the rest of the team is there. Uh, why does top lane suck according to me? Uh, agency. There, there's less agency in the role, and also I just feel like... In general, there's much more room in bot lane for non-AD carries. Uh, I think that that's something that's really unexplored. As much as it could be. And there's a lot that Trinomir can do in mid lane that he can't do in other lanes. Doing an honest, unexpectedly good job? Why is it unexpected? Have you never seen my commentary? What do you think of the new Pantheon one-shot build with Metamune and Bork? I haven't tested it, but I am a... Pa Pantheon is my tertiary champion. If I can't play Trindamir, I'll play uh, Nocturne mid, and then I'll play Pantheon. But I'll, I'll have to try the Metamune Pantheon build. Since he can proc three on hits with his W, that, that sounds like it might be pretty strong. Know where I can find that build? Oh yeah. YouTube.com slash Fog for the Winiaske. Your YouTube, yes. On Fog's YouTube, you can see that one-shot Metamune work build. I'll, I'll have to check that out and potentially use that in my games. Take Hail of Blades, that's, that's a lot of on-hit. How does trend of 260 CS? This is this is just how you play in this this is just what kind of happens in free lanes. If there's not a pushback on Trinomir, Trinomir has no reason to not just take everything. And this is what you should be doing. And since we have Yumi on us, this should be a free dive. We can get it before anybody else has time to rotate. So we'll get this. Yumi will heal us and we'll be chill. Yeah, Sanguine Blade. If you're just going for this kind of permafarm strategy, you almost always have the value from it. So you, you can do a lot with it. This, I, we're five levels ahead. This this is should be an easy play. doesn't matter that Sanguine Blade isn't active because we have so much gold that Sanguine Blade gave us. So even if the Sanguine Blade passive isn't active, the amount of gold that we got from having the Sanguine Blade passive is greater than what we would have lost from being in a 1v... in a 2v2. 